Okay, so I was asked uh, another question around uh, fear of moving, fear of being provided for, um, financial insecurity. Um, yeah, I think that's the, the gist of it. And um, okay, so um, well, with the with the fear of moving, I mean, on the spiritual, I mean, there's the practical level. Of, of taking actions around things on the practical level, but on the spiritual level, um, is the pro pro a if there's fear of moving, then processing the fear by feeling the feelings, allowing the feelings. Um, also, a lot of these things are like home is security and money is security, and these are quite big things. And actually, here, here's here's the mystical thing is that actually money and a place to live it's not the place to live but actually the projection on the place to live and the projections on money are not the source of security it's actually the the spirit it's actually the connection to god the infinite stillness and presence and trust of god which provides provides everything that one needs for the next moment so that now that's that that can be heavily defended like money money it's like there's lots of beliefs especially in the western culture like money is everything if you haven't got money you're going to be on the streets but these are, these are actually all belief systems and uh, actually um, um yeah i think there's someone at this group uh, group uh, uh, actually that told me about a friend of hers who just I think doesn't work and just goes from place to place and finds things and and uh, actually I think does do the course of miracles and everything everything actually the universe always provides when one is in in those states of infinite trust because it's not you see it's actually a false belief that it's the money that keeps you safe or the house that keeps you safe it's like the universe can arrange a house and can arrange food mystically and. Um, uh, there was this um, often a slight tangent, but um, there's a lovely video of Mother Teresa on on um, YouTube being interviewed by uh, an Irish, I think an Irish interviewer or something. Anyway, I really loved it, and 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 the interviewer asks Mother Teresa, you know, have you ever, ha you know, has someone ever knocked on your door asking for shelter, and have you ever turned anyone ever away? And she said, I've never turned anyone ever away because there's always been another plate of rice and another bed available. It's like she has that infinite trust that everything will be provided for. It's, it's not like the money in the bank, but it's this infinite trust in the universe, that the universe is in fact the provider. And when, when something comes up instantly, somehow that need will be, will be catered for. So the idea, you know, when, when, when one puts too much magical projection or too much special projection or, or God status onto money or a specific property, um, then actually that, that that's a vibration of fear and actually that uh, lack of trust. Now here, here's the thing with vibrational states, the more you enter into fear and the more negative beliefs you're, you're holding and the more disconnected you get, you'll find that those vibrational states tend to create greater unmanageability and, and things going more wrong. And it, it's actually, so when there's infinite trust, we've cleared out, you know, the fear and the projections. One of the, for me, the proje it's like, you know, it's like for me having to clear away that money has got absolutely nothing to do with security. You know, it's like the universe has an infinite way infinite ways of providing for if one stays in alignment with just being in full presence and full stillness and full acceptance and also like a, a, an integral spiritual awareness that that state looks after it's like one is okay another way to say it, I mean most people understand this by they co often call it coin in modern day language the flow state um, it's like an infinite state where the ego is not involved in getting hooked into the world. It's just the, the present moment. And it mystically seems to happen that the whole universe tends to give everything one needs effortlessly at every moment. 
and actually no ego is required, which is actually um, which is what all, all the all the saints and the enlightened teachers know, and actually a lot of people have experienced short glimpses of that days of flow when everything just mystically happens and every the whole day is just absolutely beautiful, all the colours are witnessed be beautifully. So those mystical moments are the state of no ego or presence. And that equally holds true to these horrible situations. So what's happening? Well, now this is normal for all human beings, is to hold a lot of baggage around money and a place to live. And uh, survival, I mean survival is one of the biggest things that tends to hook the ego in. I haven't got enough money, my house isn't yet confirmed, you know, and then it usually will project, you know, I'm going to be homeless probably tomorrow and I won't be able to get a sandwich to eat or something like that. So that's quite a human, human trait, but that's actually a very low vibration. So um, things I do, sit with the feelings, you know, the, the fear and the projections, something is observing the fear and the projections, which is not the fear. And in fact, right now, as you're listening, in this very moment, even if there's fear and thoughts, there's a, a detached witnessing of all of this. If one can become, um, can recognize that there's a detached witnessing that is not hooked into the drama, it's not hooked into the fear, it's not hooked into the projections, it's a place of infinite stillness and trust, and actually in this place everything is always okay and always will be okay. So that, you know, just to be able to, even if you can just play with that and hook into that presence, then you, you quickly escalate up the vibrational scale. And here's the thing, is like actually I always know, I've always, you know, uh, known that, actually, you know, I guess I want an effortless present life. You know, a life of like having to do, to like make tons and tons of effort is something I don't want to do. And there's a reason for that because, you know, in my workaholism, my addiction days in the stock market, I was like putting in 100% adrenaline, 100% effort, 100% fear to achieve. And that nearly killed me, and, but also gave me a spiritual experience in hospital bed. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm quite, I don't, you know, I don't have a good experience with efforting in the world and adrenaline. So, there's a thing of like, it's like, I want to go up in vibration. I'd rather God do the heavy lifting. I have to do a little bit of work. I probably have to like, if I'm uh, like checking out new houses, do a little work. But even if I'm checking out new houses, making the phone call could be effortless. You know, going there, walking, as someone was saying, could be in the present moment without any story, in infinite trust that everything will be okay with this person or the next person, that, the next viewing. So all of that is the feeling the emotional fear. Um, I would do a lot of work around money and homes and survival, you see. Um, you know, my survival is based on how much money is in the bank. That's meaningless. Money is meaningless. Um, uh, money, is, I cancel my belief that money is the source of my survival. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. You're, you're putting it into a place of neutrality. It becomes more a thing with, not imbued with fear. Because when money is like, if money is like my survival, then it's, going, it's a fear. It's really a thing of fear. Fear or greed is, or attachment. So money is not important. It, when you make something meaningless, it doesn't mean that you're making, you don't have your wisdom, you can't use it in a neutral fashion, but you don't have any projections. It's not like, like, um, see, uh, this is a lovely tea, but this, this tea is not my God. I'm not obsessed by it, or I don't think I won't be able to survive without it. I can still drink it, but there's no mental clogging or there's no projections around it. So, so it's a neutral object. It's been, it's been de... de uh, it's the, all the attachments and associations and the projections and the values and the meanings have been stripped from it. So I do that with money and the thing. 
practice being in the present moment, practice feeling out the feelings. Also, I'd do the Course of Miracles, pray for a miracle to see the situation differently, pray for a miracle and guidance for the next right thing to do in the situation. I'm not a victim of money, I'm not a victim of finding a place, I'm not a victim of the world I see. All of these uh, lessons, um, you, you could see like what are, what are your prime programs around money and, and, house, and houses and security and start cancelling all of those beliefs. And then pray that you be intuitively guided on the next right thing. If you have to make an important decision, then at least do some heavy spiritual practice before you make. Like let's say you're going to move into a new home. You know, before you choose it, you know, I'd probably go to, you know, practice the observer, feel the feelings, speak to a, a spiritual friend, and do some spiritual work so you can tune yourself up to a higher vibration and see if the choice still seems to be in alignment with the higher intuition on it. So, those are the things I would do. The main thing that um, I've done with my work is like, is to counter the... the the idea that money is the source of my security or any house is the source of my security because I know that God can provide, a, can provide accommodation rapidly um, from out of nowhere if one is in that field of trust and infinite like, you know, God is my source, God is my source of security and when I'm in that infinite presence, infinite trust and this is not a verbal state, it's like a, a spiritual state of absolute trust. It's like when one is in that state, God will always provide in some miraculous means, you know, um, what is required, because one is staying true to the source. It's like when one is one with the universe, the universe is on your side. And when you're projecting fear into the universe and making everything in the universe God except God, that vibrational state, then it's like you cut yourself off from miracles. So I would do that, and um, not to say that um, um, it doesn't necessitate taking action, but also clearing. Action can be taken as well. Like let's say you have to do a lot of horrible jobs, like look in the paper to find out where you're going to move next to, or whatever it is. Well, actually, it's not horrible. It's actually your projections about it, you know. So I cancel my belief that looking at the newspaper is traumatic, or I cancel my belief making this phone call, or what's observing or witnessing the phone call, what's detached. And actually you'll find that as you unhook from everything, things can effortlessly happen without getting hooked into them. Like you can have a phone conversation, like is that, can I come for reviewing, and yet one can be in absolute presence and not getting hooked into anything that's happening. When things are not hooked into, then um, if there's zero hooks, no time is happening, no, the event is even remembered. So everyone knows, so one is trying to mimic with a traumatic event or having to do a house move, it's like every, everyone says like when they're having a good day, time flies. Well, why does time fly? And when one is like traumatized, every second is really, really slow. And that's because the ego's hooking into too much information, you see. And so, if the ego wasn't hooking into time, wasn't hooking into the phone call, wasn't hooking into money, wasn't hooking into all of these things, then it would be like, everything would be like, it's essentially, it's an old spiritual saying, it's like wearing the world like a loose garment. Nothing sticks. So one is in this state of presence and flow, and it's like actually nothing really sticks into the ego because nothing's in, important enough to stick. And in those states, actually, when nothing sticks, actually the miraculous happens. And when there's a lot of sticking because the ego is getting ho heavily hooked into the world, it's like everything becomes like thick glue. Actually, you, you move into uh, these low vibrations. They're actually, in, these low vibrations are heavily dualistic, heavily in the in course language heavily in the world of fear and separation. So you become very enmeshed with your body, your emotions become very, very heavy, everything becomes very important in life and death. So you want to like rise yourself up and uh, even if, if you have to take actions, you know, 
Um, actually, this is what I normally say to people who work, like, let's say, no, but that, how is this practical? Well, if you have to take a lot of actions because it's like an emergency situation or whatever, it's like actually take the actions but let go of the meaning of the actions. Unhook from the actions as you're doing them. And then you'll find that those actions in future become more and more effortless. Or individuals you meet become more and more effortless because the ego is not hooking into them. Because the source, here's the thing, because... It's not that nothing is special out there. Everything is, is act, in truth, there is only a state of oneness and love. So anything that the ego hooks into creates, um, creates heaviness. So let, let's say right now there's just like infinite stillness, infinite peace, a state of love. There's a presence of love that's unchanging right now. Now, let's say that's the truth. Actually, I'd say it is the truth. There's just unchanging, timeless love that's being witnessed now in infinite presence. So, if the ego tracks a second of time, then time seems to exist. If the ego suddenly says, this person is the most important person in the room, suddenly it creates like, you know, this state of infinite presence and infinite love starts to get disconnected. Or let's say the ego starts to think of, what am I going to do afterwards or later on? This state of infinite love gets disconnected. And also is a source of intuition and flow, and, and allowing of, it allows the miracles in. So that's, you know, that's the whole thing of how the ego, you see, this is what I was saying earlier about disconnection. As soon as, the, the more the ego hooks into in the present moment, the more the state of disconnection there is. So it's like, actually, whatever you're holding on to, let it go. And if you could let that go, let go of all your thoughts you're hooking into, let go of any object or person being meaning, more meaningful than anything else. So you let, let go of even sounds, being any sound being more important than another sound, any color being more important than another color. There's just infinite presence and stillness that, that's here. And if you do that for a few seconds in a row, then you start to feel this sense of timeless flow. And as you keep this timeless flow up, then you'll start to see like the, uni um, the universe will take care of you when you're in the thing. And um, now this is um, probably, um, yeah. So one, one of my teachers, Dr. David R. Hawkins, went to, suddenly decided he had a massive spiritual experience, wanted to go and live in the middle of the desert in Sedona in Arizona to live in a little sort of shed on his own uh, with more or less, with very little money, he would just walk out, you know, with, with more or less nearly no food in the fridge. And then a person would just offer to buy him dinner or would give him a pack of biscuits. He's, he's you know, he's, he said this. It's like the universe, when required, will just provide the food, you see. So that's just how the miraculous works. I remember with Muji, um, he um, decided he was on benefit. He was on. Um, he said he was on benefits. And one day, they asked him. Um, they asked him, like, um, "What have you done to find work this week?" And he said, "Nothing." So he said, "Okay. <laughs> so we're going to stop your benefits. <laughs> you know, we're going to stop your benefits." And like, it just came out of him that he would say the truth. So he just did. <laughs> And you know, and I think I think I think this is chronologically correct. So he just went out. He was homeless, and then someone said, you know, they had a banana in their hand. I think and they said to him, I think you need this banana for some reason. They gave him the banana, but he knew it was like the universe was saying, you'll be taken care of. You see, it was it was symbolically important that uh, when when you have that absolute trust and you're doing what's in your heart and staying clear of your ego that um, the, the miracles unfold. Also been my experience. So I think, yeah, okay. So 